We are live. Hey everybody, thank you for joining us for our Wednesday live broadcast. We are broadcasting live from the Dr. Beasley's Corporate Office and Training Center here in Chicago, Illinois. And I have a guest with me today for this live broadcast, Bill McLean, who owns the TouchUp RX Rockship Repair Kit System. Now we're here for a five-day class. So this is the end of our three-day class, of our, the third day of our five-day class. So we're gonna be covering a lot of different topics that the people that are attending this class need to know for their business model. And that includes rock chip repair. So Bill, welcome to the live Thanks, broadcast. Sir. Thank you. And um, I know that rock chip is really a, a common problem. Any of the drivers their car, they're gonna have this, you know, mm -hmm. and getting the hood repaint can be real expensive, but here's a way they can fix it themselves and no one can ever tell they had a rock chip. Plus you stop the rust from taking place. So why don't you Absolutely. just maybe give us a little quick background about your company and uh, maybe how you got started and then what we're gonna be looking at here today. Okay, um, well, I built my first commercial paint chip repair system probably over 20 years ago. Uh, same as the, the retail product, we have a one color repair kit for your personal car, for example. This big box of paint is made for people like mobile detailers and, and used car dealerships, anybody who's got their hands on a lot of cars. Okay. So you've got a box of paint, to address a lot of colors or you've got your one color to dress your own car. So if uh, someone's watching this today and say they got a rock chip in the car, they can go to your website and you can help them figure out exactly what color they need for the car and then you can send them a kit and they can do it themselves. And you probably got videos and instructions on your website yep. to show how to use this. And of course, if you're watching right now, you're gonna see how to do it live. You are. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure, thanks. <laughs> okay, yeah. well. Thanks, Mike. Mike threw me into this, by the way, the last minute by saying, I'm, you're going to take over my, my show for the hour. And I wasn't prepared for that. So I appreciate, thank, thank I appreciate that. Thank though. you. And I will do everything I can to help you. Give a break. Don't go too far away now. Okay. Okay. So we've got, this is what I usually take to, uh, we go to the SEMA show. We go to the Mobile Tech Show, um, Mobile Tech Expo. We take a hood basically from a junkyard and we put a lot of chips in it. We bang out with a, a bolt or a screwdriver and put chips in the panel. Uh, it's hard to get a car to a show and it's hard for a lot of reasons. So this is what we use. Um, different colors, we bring the white a lot of times because you can see the chips from way back there where some colors you have to get up closer to see the chips. So we have a panel here that's in a partial state of repair already. Um, I don't know what that camera picks up, but cameras sometimes pick up a lot of stuff that's a little too close. So from the people that are over here, you can see the chips pretty clearly, I believe. Um, what you don't notice is maybe some of the chips that are painted or are in a partial state of repair. So to expedite this process so you're not watching paint dry, uh, I've put paint on some portions of this. I don't know if you can see the paint smears right here or not, but there's let me just show you how it works real quick. So you've got a color, and this could be your OEM color match, or this could be a color from the box. You're at a car dealership, you've got a number of white colors in your box, and you go, well, I think that might be the one that matches. You just have to eye it up. You're eyeballing yeah. it, so you're like, oh, let's try this one first. So you're gonna take this little handy dandy squeegee right here. You're gonna take a drop of paint and put it on the panel like that next to the chip. You're gonna take this little squeegee with the bevel side down and you're gonna smear it flat over the chip. You can pick the paint up and you can repeat that process. I'm gonna apply another drop of paint, you can pick it up, smear it, pick it up. Yeah, and so this is very different from what most people know for doing rock chip repair. What most systems and what most people do is they take the paint and a small paintbrush and they put mm -hmm. a blob into the hole and then you have a hood full of blobs. Right. So the way this thing works is you're gonna have a, a flat surface just like you didn't have the rock chip to start with. Right. You're gonna have a slightly recessed repaired chip that is the same color as the car. It doesn't stand out like a regular touch-up blob with a dabber that's gonna catch your eye. Yeah. You know, when you, when you have a little dabber, you might have the perfect color match, but you put that on the panel, now that paint dries, you've got little dots that catch your eye. Mm -hmm. What happens next is that that paint will dry Cure, shrink, crack, and pop out. Oh, wow. You're gonna end up having a ring of old touch of paint <laughs> around the chip. Yeah. That looks terrible, you know, within a year or two. Yeah. So that's the, the way yours works is with that squeegee, you, f you fill in the hole and then you flatten it over. You're smear it's kind of like spackling holes in drywall. You're, you're putting the paint on, you're pushing that paint into the hole, yeah. and you're pulling the skim paint around the, the gotcha. area. Okay. It dries, but, and then you remove the excess paint like we'll do in a second here. Sure. This paint is also, uh, it's, 
It's malleable, so you can mold it, sculpt it, and remove it like this. Like regular paint, it dries hard and, and it cracks and it's, you can't do much with it. So this is a proprietary paint system just for your company? It is. It's not, you can't do this with regular touch of paint. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, this stuff will hold its shape and we've tested up to 10 years. It looks the same in the chip as it did when we first put it in. Gotcha. So let me just show you while this paint over here is drying. This is acetone. This is what we use so that we can keep on pulling the paint out of the chips and start over. You guys back here, the middle of this panel, which I'll show you in a second, I painted the chip itself. It's a clean repair. There's no excess paint on the surface. There's no blob. But let me show you what it looks like before I painted it. Just to give you a, wow. an idea of how big that chip was. Yeah, and, and so before, my eyes did not even go to that area. Mm -hmm. I thought, in fact, had you not shown me at an angle where the touch-up paint was applied from five feet away, I would have never saw it. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. It's not a perfect repair. It's not a magic mm -hmm. wand where, wow, it never happened. It's like, uh, like Brian said earlier, it's a repair. Mm -hmm. And you're camouflaging that repair to where the goal is to walk by that car and, and not notice any repair. Not notice the damage and not notice the repair. And you're stopping rust. Exactly. Yeah, so. so this other area here we, is the... Uh, let me apply the paint so you can see a little more here. Again, you put the paint on, you smear it flat, smear it flat. Even this big one right here. That's a pretty good sized rock chip. One application, boom. Bam. That paint will dry and seem like I did before. I'm just gonna remove the excess and that's that. Okay, so now after you've went around and applied the um, paint onto the different rock chips, how long do you want to let that dwell or to dry before you start, you know, wiping off the excess? So you, if you're working on your average car, you're going to have maybe a dozen or a couple of dozen chips. Okay. You're going to start on the left side of your car and dab and smear and, and work your way across. By the time you're done over here, you're ready to go back and, okay. and, and do this, oh, okay. begin the second step. The second step is with our the pink stuff blending solution. Uh, this stuff, as you saw, I applied it here. Let me show you. You didn't see that because I haven't done that. Yeah, yeah, we haven't seen the blending solution. Okay, so this side of the panel here has the paint smears all over it already. Um, you shake this stuff up. I suppose I could use a clean cloth. Here's a clean one. Maybe I'll do that instead of using a dirty cloth. Now this comes in a clear bottle. I noticed that when you shook it up, it, it was separated, but now it's a uniform mixture. Correct. So that's important. That's why you put it in a clear bottle. You want to shake it, yeah, and make sure it's, it's uniformly pink. Like and this that. is proprietary to your system also. So you yes. couldn't use this with the touch-up paint you buy at uh, some car parts store. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, they don't work together. They don't work, yeah. The paint and the pink go together. So second step, you get the cloth. This is the, the blending cloth that comes with the kit, the retail kit, or you get a big stack of them with the commercial kit. Sure. So you have a bunch of paint smears now all over this panel. And you can see, I don't know if you can pick that up with the camera, but when I made these chips, I used a bolt and I put big dents in the thing. So the, the, the dents will catch your eye even after the repair is done. Uh, but to show you the second step, you're gonna basically rub over all that paint that we put on the panel. It's like finger painting, it almost, you know, we used a squeegee, but any method you, you want to use to get, not that, that's the acetone. And I'm just rubbing over with all this paint smears, uh, light, medium pressure. And Once one of the things I noticed is the cloth itself has a flat surface. If you were to use something that had like a loop to it, that might tend to go into the chip and pull the paint out. Right. So this is part of the, the technique is using a, this flat cloth. It is, yeah, you want to use a, a smooth cloth. Once you get the hang of this, I've seen, you know, years ago I used um, uh, terry cloth towels or t-shirt rags. You don't have to use these once you, you get the feel of it. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not a, that expensive, but we, we send those out with our retail kits for commercial customers, I'm sorry, the uh, retail customers because we want them to have the best cloth that they, they could possibly have to remove the excess. Now, is this something where you want to use a fairly wet application? <coughs> you do. You don't want to soak the cloth. You want to get it damp. But I mean, I've, I've reapplied twice, and mm -hmm. that's it for this whole area here. Mm -hmm. It's plenty wet enough right now. 
So when you cover an area, you want to work in, in, in quadrants. So say this was your, your, uh, a whole car. You want to kind of work in segments, partially so you don't miss any paint, because a lot of times, you know, there are smears that I put on there, but you have to get down an angle to see yeah. what you did. Yeah. So and worst case, if you come back even a few days later, a week later, you're at a dealership lot maybe, and you go, oh, I still see some paint right there. I forgot that from last week. Yeah. It's okay. You can still get it off. Oh, awesome. You're not stuck with it. There's no rush in getting this paint off the panel. If you put it on and you got to take off for two hours, you can come back and, and pick up where you left off. Gotcha. Regular touch of paint, you're, you're stuck with what you got. So once you get the, all the excess paint off, you're going to use the microfiber towel and you're just going to hand buff over the area real quickly. So you've got no black dots. You don't have the chips. We, we have the one here. If you, you're looking at, he left that one there. He didn't fill this one in. I left that and these yeah, two. Yes. Yeah. So the rest of it, you filled it and now you've blended away the excess and Hold now that. you've got a finished repair. Hold that for a second. Just to go, I like to go backwards sometimes because people will walk by a car or a panel and say, well, I don't see anything or it looks pretty clean or they have their eyeball and they go, I can still see the chip. Mm -hmm. But the, the goal again is to walk by and not notice that the repairs were even made. So, so and what I tell people about this is, you know, look, if, if you've got a rock chip on the hood of your car and you want it to look perfect, that's called a new paint job, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, go down to any body shop and get a quote for what it's gonna cost to repaint the hood and I think you're gonna like this system a lot better. And the problem with, say you get a rock chip, because this happened to me, I bought a brand new car, driving the road, ting, I got a rock chip in the hood, that mm -hmm. killed me. Uh, but the thing is, is even if you were to take and have the hood repainted, as soon as you drive the car, you're going to get another rock chip. It's mm -hmm. a never ending cycle if it's a daily driver. So you yeah. need a way, though this is amazing. So, um, but you need a way to do these types of repairs, you know, on an as needed basis for your daily drivers. And the whole goal is so that your eye is just not attracted to the chip itself. If you want to get your nose down there and go, I don't know, Bill, I can still see where the touch up paint is, mm -hmm. then that's called getting a new paint job. Right. It, it, it did its job. If you have to find it and look that hard. And again, I just did the second step. I blended that excess <laughs> paint off of that yep. big chip I just did. So it's smooth again. And you can rub your finger on there. I just did it. And it's already dry. I mean, yeah. you have to really dig, dig hard to get it out. And then, uh, you know, once again, the, the fun part. Sometimes it's more fun removing it, you know, that clean. So another observation I just thought about, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this, is the, this is a system that if this is the first time you've ever used it and you're not happy with the results, you could just take it off and start over. Yeah. And then and you, start, you could do it as many times to so self-teaching. You can uh, practice makes perfect. You can. It's yeah. forgiving. You yeah. can't screw up with this paint. You can put it on a hundred times and take it off until you want it just right. Gotcha. Uh, there's, there's no, you're not stuck with what you did. Yeah. So it's, a, it's very forgiving. You can also do things like, uh, I don't have the microfiber uh, or micro brushes with me, but the kit comes with some micro brushes. They're good for the, uh, say that, you know, when people open their car door and mm -hmm. something and they whack it and yeah. then they get, and then there's one on this car over here. You can put a bead of, of paint down the edge of that car door, let it dry. And if it's not smooth like you want it, you can actually squeeze the paint and, and, and mold it and shape it a little bit hmm. before it's fully cured. So, or you can wipe it off and start over. Uh, so it's a lot more forgiving than regular touch-up paint. So what is, what is the enthusiast uh, single paint kit retail for? 50 bucks free shipping. Wow, $50 in free shipping. Yep. Yeah, so, and again, you know, if you've never done this before, it's okay. There's always a first time for everything. But if, if you don't like the repair, just remove it with the uh, solution there and then start mm -hmm. over until you're happy. Yep. The retail kits uh, we make by OEM Pinko, so they go to the website, like you mentioned earlier, and there you put in your year, make, and model. It should populate the color options for your car. Gotcha. So you click on your color and you go through the process checkout and it gets shipped out with it. Now, if you're a detailer and you want to add this as a service, so you want to buy the multiple color kit, what does it cost to get into something like this? Well, we have three different commercial systems. We've got a 45 color, an 85, and 150. Um, we'll do show specials for the Mobile Tech Expo for SEMA. We'll drop the prices by $1,500 or so. So you can get into one of these things that, you know, for show pricing uh, for two grand, uh, under two grand up to uh, maybe four grand depending what size you want to go through. Just on, depending on, on how many paint colors you want. It is. Yeah. And it's primarily, you've got your blending solution, you've got your little squeegees, 
You've got uh, some prep solution, which I didn't bring, uh, yeah. which is good for silicone. You know, we'll clean up before you paint sometimes. You've got your gloves. Everything that you need comes with the kit. Uh, it just depends on do you want 45, do you want 85, or do you want 150. Sure. So you've got different levels that people can get into. Mm -hmm. Now, as a detailer, what kind of prices are people charging to do rock chip repair for a customer car that they can add on to their detailing menu packages? It depends where you're going. If you're going to a dealership, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting anywhere from 75 to 135 on average probably. Per car? Per car. That really means the front, the forward facing part of the car. Sure. Um, you're not spending an hour on a car. You're doing like the basic stuff that you see. Gotcha. Uh, that's a fair price. I think there's there's some guys I talked to in the Northeast. They're getting 200, 250 a car. Wow. Uh, so you can make some pretty good coin. So they do. They really do. <laughs> and it's a fast. It's a fast repair. Um, you know, there's a lot of money to be made sure. uh, doing it. Your your retail guys, I think, are getting probably 250 to 300. Um, but your, your, your um, meat and potatoes, the dealerships, where yeah. you've got 10 cars lined up, you wrote up 12, and the dealership said, do these 10. Yeah. Uh, 75 to probably 135. That's probably a pretty good uh, so figure. Could this be a standalone business? So you get the, say you get the 80 bottle kit, then you just develop a route calling on dealerships, establishing a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Because they want to sell cars that don't have rock chips. You know, people are going to point it out. So they'd rather, they'd rather have a car that looks good mm -hmm. that they can sell. So exactly. that's the whole idea. It is. We'll sell it to people that have never been in the car business before. They've never done anything in the business. But they want to have their own life. They want to have their own company, their own path. Uh, we'll sell a box of paint and say, Here's what you do, and it's pretty simple. You go out and you show, you go to a used car dealership and you say, let me just show you what I can do. I'm not good at sales, but I can show you. Okay. And they walk up and you find a car that's just peppered in chips. You do a third of the panel, do a half the panel, say, come on, have a look. Manager walks out and he goes, hmm, yeah, it's pretty good. How much? <laughs> okay, can you come back every Tuesday? Yeah. You just so, got your first account. Yep. Um, Add-ons, you know, the guys that are already in the business, they've got the contacts. It's just another add-on service for them. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, we got a couple of cars here. We got a bunch of students here. Where do you want to okay. go next with this? Uh, let's go over here. This fine Shelby uh, GT350 okay. Mustang. My, my eyes, I don't really see any rock chips over there, but maybe I'm just not looking. We painted a couple before we tested. Oh. And this is a great test because this paint matches let me show you quick this paint more or less matches this panel it's not exact yeah but that panel does not match that car mm -hmm. it's way too bright mm -hmm. well when our actual paint that we made got absconded with we had to come up with the second best which is this paint this paint which is way too bright let me grab this real quick so we just tested a couple of these chips real quick to see how bad it was going to look. Looked pretty good. It, yeah. So there are three chips in this area right here. That you've and, already filled in. Correct. So I don't even see them. From here, I can't tell that it was ever damaged. That's the goal. That's Again, the goal. that's the, the goal is to say, wow, this car looks pretty clean. There's a chip right here. But I'll show you because I can see them from this angle. So that's some acetone. So now you're going to undo your perfectly looking work. I'm going to take the paint out and show you where that chip oh, was. Okay, so now I see it. So that was one. Uh, there's two more. Somewhere. Here's one, I think. Can you find it? There's another one. That's a small one. But there's a bigger one over here somewhere. Well, it's uh, seeing that you're struggling to find your repair work, that's actually a good sign. <laughs> here. I it can't is. see where I put the touch-up paint. Yeah, it is. There's a third one. I just can't find it. But anyway, you see, like, that's a pretty good... And that didn't show up when we walked over here. No. So that's the whole goal of the system. It, it, uh, it takes... It, your eyes are not drawn to where the rock chip is. It's not that you could never see where it was at. It's right. Just, it's a repair. Right. And it's a lot cheaper than having the hood repainted. Chris might know where that chip is. I think I test painted it. He went, he went right to it because he knew where it was because it bothers him a lot. Yeah. 
But he came back and he's like looking for the other two like I did. I was like, oh, you can't find them, can you? Yeah. So, again, here's a chip and a, a you know, one chip. We're going to put this paint on that does not match. It's very, way too bright white. But, oh, you found it? I think you did find it. Even though that contrast is way off, uh -huh. the end result is pretty clean. Pretty clean. Yeah, yeah. You really had to look for it. Very transparent. So we've got some, let me see if I can find that. Where is it? Here? Sometimes it's hard. Oh, here we go. There's another one. So imagine, <laughs> I knew I'd find it eventually. Yeah. So imagine you've got a whole hood full of chips, not just a couple. They bother you. A couple of chips is bad, but think of those cars that are road rash, that are just peppered. Those fall are the like, fun ones to do. Yeah, you fall like a gravel truck and it's dropping pebbles. Or exactly. Rocks. Go into a dealership or a used car lot or anywhere that has used cars that they want cleaned up. When you see that car that's just peppered, you're like, mm -hmm. this is going to be the fun one. This is my demo car. Uh, you do half the hood. And they walk out and like, what happened to that side? Because they don't notice the, the chips yeah. on this side. Yeah. Uh, so that's the goal. It's not, you know, it's not a, a permanent, uh, it is a permanent repair. It's not a perfect repair, but it's a lot better than what you're going to do with, with touch-up paint. How about yeah. scratches? No blocks. Um, scratches are unique animals. I'll say they work great on some scratches and they won't do a thing for other scratches. Yeah. So for example, a deep scratch is good, but here's an example. When you get a key scratch, typically the key goes in, so it goes in light, and it's a clear coat scratch, then it goes in deeper, then it comes back out light again. So the part in the middle where the paint's missing, it will work pretty well on typically. Uh, you can usually sand or buff the, uh, the exterior portion, but the, the center portion of that scratch, you gotta put paint in. Yeah. A lot of colors it'll look great on, and other colors it won't make a bit of difference on. Yeah. So say a silver car with a key scratch, don't bother because it's going to look the same when you're done. It's just the nature of, of color. And that silver key scratch, you could have the perfect color and put 100% flush fill in with that paint, it's still going to look like it never, like it, like you didn't do anything to it. Gotcha. That's a body shop. So there's a limit to what you can fix. There so, is. Yeah. And it's a lot of it's color dependent. Um, a lot of times it's, it's damage dependent, whether it's a scratch. That's why I like to... There's a lot, you know, again, the paint's very forgiving. It's very malleable. You can't really scrub with it. So there's a lot of ways you can use it to get a good repair. It's just a matter of how much time you want to spend on it uh, or, or, or pass on. So there's, uh, there's more chips over here. And I don't know if you want to... We'll have, maybe if somebody wants to, to try this themselves right we here. We have a volunteer, somebody mm -hmm. that feels like yeah. they'd like to give this a try, right behind you here, right next to you. So let me just pull off the paint here, give you a clean squeegee. So the paint, when you use the squeegee, you're going to have excess paint left on this. Basically, you just take some blending solution, the pink stuff, and you wipe it off. This is acetone. This is what I use to remove the paint from the chips to do another demo. You can use that also. And, and, and just to let you guys know, that's actually fingernail polish remover, which is yeah, acetone. Exactly. But usually fingernail polish remover is kind of a safer version of the stuff you'd buy at Lowe's or Home Depot Correct. in a one quart can. It's a little more buffered, so it's safer yeah, for Yeah, a little sure. buffered, a little, yep. little safer. Okay. So I keep some of that in our shop, just so someone comes in and they, uh, they found some road paint, they got some paint on the car, mm -hmm. you can use that to, usually it'll take it off. Yeah. So it's a little detail or secret. Have a right. fingernail polish remover in the shop, and you can take off extraneous paint. I'll use that. I use the fingernail polish remover with, with a little, either a little wax, a little liquid wax, just to buffer the harsh effects if it's more straight acetone. Also, mm -hmm. I remember doing that to a black, brand new car once, and I left a big haze in the clear coat. Gotcha. And it's like, what yeah, are you doing? Yeah, black. Now? Yeah. So, uh, you want to try it? Sure. Like I say, black's not a color. It's a full-time job. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to basically just put one drop of paint. I'm going to put it above because it's going to run down. And you're going to hold that squeegee a little, um, you're going to hold it almost parallel. And you're just going to pull it flat, kind of like you're, just pull it flat and smooth over the chip. 
You go back and do it, do it again with a little less pressure. A little more flat. There you go, stop. So when you finally, and you can smear this out any which way you want, but when you pull that squeegee the right way suddenly over there, you, with the right angle, it's, it looks good. So then leave it. And then you go on to the second chip and the third chip. And you can continue using the paint that's on, on your squeegee? Yes. Or you're laying new dots every single chip? No, you can get, so you're going to get three to five or six chips out of one drop of paint. Okay. So you're gonna, once you get the feel of it, you're going to mm -hmm. pick up the paint and you're going to smear it, pick it up, and you'll keep that, that extra paint on the underside of that squeegee. Oh, okay. yeah. So you can, this is clear, so you can see how much paint you have on the other yeah. side, so, so you can guide it to where you want it to go. So the squeegees are clear for a yeah, reason. Yeah, it should. Here, here's one right, see if you can get that one right there. That's on the edge, it's a little more difficult, hold it more flat. You're going to hold the, there you go. When you get, when you're, there you go, that looks pretty good. When you've got paint on, a, on an edge, this is a little bit to the side of it, but when it's on the very top of that edge, mm -hmm. you really can't use the squeegee process because you need a flat area around it okay. to be able to do what you're doing. So if this was, say, on the leading, you had a chip on the leading edge of the hood uh, or the door edge, you're going to use a microbrush and you're just going to pull that paint down the edge and just leave it. Okay. If it looks a little bit, you know, large, fat to you, you can always tap it flat when it's dry. You can squeeze it but you're not gonna be used to squeegee on that section of the, the panel. It's gotta be a flat surface. It's gotta be a flat surface. Yeah. So Here's a, an area, uh, we'll go back and, and uh, do the second step when this is dry. Um, actually, this is probably dry right now. Um, Lenny, can you grab that pink stuff? So I'll let you do the second step mm -hmm. on this. So this paint's, this paint's dry to the touch now. It's not cured. But you can rub on it, it's not coming off. Now, could you polish on this? You wouldn't want to, you'd want to do your polishing and your hard compounding, your buffing first. Okay. You want to do the paint last and then do your paint correction, your, cera I'm sorry, your ceramic coating or your PPF on top of that. Okay. Just ask, because we had some people in the chat wondering how quickly you could polish after uh, putting us into this stuff. You do, do all that first. Okay. Um, yeah, you always want to do the paint correction before you do the rock chip repair. What happens if you do the rock chip repair and start compounding? You'll tend to either abrade the paint out of the hole, or if you're using something like a rotary or a gear driven polisher, you actually generate enough heat, you'll heat that paint up, it'll soften, and then it'll yank out. So you do paint correction first, and then do the rock chip repair. Correct. We tested this doing some uh, ceramic coating. We did the paint chip repair last that evening and the next day we did uh, ceramic coating on the top that had no adverse reaction with the paint whatsoever because gotcha. you're going around the top again so the second step you're going to fold that over you know give this a quick shake and then you're going to get that wet you don't want to soak it soak it so that should be good enough. that's good yeah and then you're going to hold your hand flat and you're going to rub over it with light to medium pressure once you do this a few times, you're going to get a feel of, of how hard you can push and how fast you can go. Yeah, as you're rubbing and that, you, you, can, if you can look and you can feel as the excess starts to come off. You could close your eyes once you do this a few times and you can feel that paint start to come yeah. off. And you want to avoid digging using your finger to dig. You want to kind of keep your hand more flat. Very, very flat, yep. But you can rub a little harder. I mean, the worst case, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to pull the paint out and go, oops, i got to do it again. Yeah, so go. that's why it's self-teaching. There you go. So when you have all that excess paint off, your next step is take a microfiber towel and just, just hand buff. And you're shining that whole area okay. up, you're cleaning off the residual uh, blending solution. Now you've got a clean repair. Yeah, from, from here, I could never tell there's a rock chip there. So that's, again, that's the goal. You know, people don't want to put their nose down here and go, well, I don't know, Bill, I can still see I it still right see here. I still see it. Yeah, it's, it's not the system for you. Go get a paint job. Right, you get, know, in, you know, get in a hood. We want to take a guess on what it costs to get this hood repainted, just the hood. No blend lines, the whole hood repainted. I, I'd say for this, Shelby, you're being the two to $3,000 range, easy. Or yeah. $50 for a doc, for the rock ship repair kit. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You say, uh, it takes for the paint to dry? How long for the paint to dry? Yeah. Once you smear it flat, right. it's dry within three minutes. Oh, okay, so it's not. You don't have to, you wait. Don't have to wait that long. No. You, you want to give it, if you can give it three to four to five, that's fine. Okay. 
but you also don't have to rush. So if you've got to take off and go have lunch and or something happens and you've got to come back three hours later or even the next day, you go, oh, I've got to take all that paint off the car, you can still take it off. You're not well, stuck with that on there. That easy as like he was doing it? Yes. You, you can use the same pressure. Okay. If you wait a week, you're going to have to use a little of the acetone or nail polish remover with the blending solution to get a little more bite to take it off. But you can take it off even a week later. Uh, oh, well. That is crazy, That's yeah. Really cool. yeah. Another, just another little tip I was thinking of. So these are small chips and you can pass right over them with the white cloth that you mm -hmm. have. When you have a chip the size of a nickels and dimes, which are really beyond the scope of what our kit addresses, uh, I say anything really smaller than a pencil eraser, you're going to have really good luck with it typically. Once you get bigger, it's going to look much better. It's going to be better than if you were to use regular touch-up paint and you don't want to spend the money on a body shop respray. Right. But when you get, say, a larger chip, you might want to rub around with this second step. Use this cloth and rub around the chip and not pass over it because now you've got an area that's this big. You're going to dig in that paint and pull some out. Yeah, because your cloth is going to actually go into it. <laughs> right. So you're going right. to rub it out. So uh, just something to keep in mind. If you've got bigger chips, you can still get a great repair just by right. working around the edges. Mm -hmm. I've even taken uh, a, a credit card and say on a bumper, I've done a bumper where there's thousands of chips. It really should have been resprayed, but I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do the touch up because they're going to be happy with it. Uh, I'll get that, I'll get this thing pretty wet and I'll just kind of coat the face of the bumper and then I'll take a credit card and I'll scrape I'll get it wet and I'll scrape, scrape, get it wet, scrape, scrape back and forth. Mm -hmm. That credit card is cutting over the top and it's not digging down the holes like you might, you might do gotcha. with a cloth. So wow. there's a lot of little tricks, uh, you know, once you get it, but it's, it's a fast learn. Like yeah. Mike said, you, you learn very quickly. Great. So there's a few over here. I don't know if, if somebody yeah, wants to, to do it. it. There's a rocker panel. It's a little more difficult. It's not difficult, it's just challenging. See the rocker panel here? Okay, yeah, nice and flat. Um, but like up on the, like this lip here, where a lot of cars get deemed. Right. So that would be pretty hard, right? But you'd yeah. still be able to like oh, get this, this in chip. there. Look at that chip right yeah, there. Yeah, that's the one he was mentioning. He okay. saw it come and hit. Oh, Same there's another one right there. there. So the ones on the edges, you're gonna use a micro brush and you're just gonna put okay. it on and leave it. This one, you can put it on and smear it. This one, this? Like you can kind probably- on that edge? It's close. I but probably still would. Be able to... You should. I probably would try with a micro brush and see how good you can get it. Okay. And again, the, the paint that I have doesn't really match this car, but but I mean, it's, it blended it's, it enough that we weren't able to see. Right. Yeah. So you imagine if you had chips up yeah. there until you right. wipe the paint away, and it's like, oh, there was a chip there. Right. You so if you had the difference. actual real color that we yeah. make that would match this car, it would have, you'd even have better results. So you see these. Yeah, these whole, chips right here. Let's do a few of those. Let me get. And, the, the and in all fairness to Bill, he didn't know what he's going to be working on when he got here, or I'm sure he would have bought the matching paint. So. I would have. I didn't know I was going to be wearing a mic either. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, so you have a squeegee, some, uh, right? Good examples of uh, uh, road rash here. Just uh, uh, rocks probably flying up from other cars or your own tires hitting that little side that comes out. It's when he's yep. drifting. Drifting. Yep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I'm okay. using this flat side, right? I'm not using the bevel? Right, you're going to use the underside the of the bevel, okay. right? So this, you're going to apply the paint to the underside, and you're going to just pull it up. Okay. Yep. So, try that, just a drop. And you're going to, you don't want to push real hard, you just want to give it firm pressure. There you go. And when you cover it and it's smooth, looks good, then stop. Don't go back over it again because okay. you'll end up pulling the paint back and out. like I have that line? Yeah, that's okay. You can, you can smear that line with your... Usually okay. we use gloves and I forgot to put my glove on, but... Another drop of paint. And a little more parallel to the panel. There you go. There you go. Yep, looks good. Yeah, looks good. That's step one. Now let's set up for a few minutes. Let's set up and we're going to come back with step two and we're going to rub over it and it keeps going. It's the thing, the more you look, the more <laughs> chips you find.
Yeah. yeah. I mean, those chips you could see standing back. Back here, I can see those chips. Yeah. When we're done, you're going to have to get up close to look to find those chips. I've done, I've done other, like, paint repair, like, chip repair on clients' vehicles. But yeah. I'm using, like, the pins that they've specifically bought for, like, their Jag or something. Yeah. And so I'm out there dabbing it, and then I have to let that dry, flip it over, dab it with the clear coat. Yeah. And then you can tell that the level difference from the yeah. original paint from yeah. what I just put on is totally There's, different. Yeah. It's a blob. It's, it's higher. Yeah. It's definitely higher. You could feel it, like... Yeah. If you clay mitted it, you'd actually hear it yeah. <laughs> over the clay mitt. There's no easy way to, to put clay coat on top of, of paint when you're doing it that way. Yeah, it's, 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 it's impossible. No, no one's been sprayed like that. No. So this will take a few minutes to dry. So does this have any type of like clear coat? So if we didn't end up like ceramic coating over on top of mm -hmm. it, is it not going to fade? Is it still going to be like that rust resistance of... It's for the most part, it's a permanent it, repair. Okay. It's yeah. a we say it's a permanent repair in that I've tested two vehicles ten years and they look the same as they did from the day I put them on. And they haven't been ceramic coated or anything like nope. that on top of the repairs. Nope. Repairs? Not at Just all. Just like a traditional wax or something. Maybe I don't know if the guy even hand waxed it. Okay. <laughs> he. I did half the car. This was a, a, a Geo Metro, I believe. Uh, I did twenty years ago. The guy thought it was a conversation piece because it was hammered. Yeah. We did half of it, and he just laughed. He said, I love it. Now that people say, what happened to that side? <laughs> I saw him 10 years later. It was a uh, father-in-law, my buddy, and uh, he, just, he just loved it. So it's, Is there something we it. can wipe off up here and then kind of uh, do some questions and answers? Sure. You can come back later on and wipe, yeah, practice definitely. wiping this off. What, what was up here we still had to wipe off? Right here? Uh, right here. Yeah. So, All uh, right. Let's let him practice. Come up and practice on this one. You have, uh, here, I get you a cloth. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yep. Yes. Shake, it, Shake yep. it well. It's right there. Hmm. You guys keep saying go to the website, but you're not saying the name. It was brought to our attention that we say go to the website, but we're not saying touchuprx.com. Oh, yeah, yeah, we should, yeah. <laughs> we should be promoting, I suppose, if we're <laughs> talking about the product. So, yes, touchuprx.com. Rx. Touchuprx. It's looking pretty clean. Yeah. And you're able to get that, that, the excess off from that, that edge there. Yeah, and I mean, there was like a big run of paint that was right there. Yep. I mean, it's, it's amazing how it just wipes right off like that, but it doesn't do anything to the actual rock chip. No, so when you're done, again, the last step yep. is you just hand, just, you just hand microfiber mm -hmm. buff real quick. Wow, like a boss. That looks that's good. It. Like a boss, yeah. like you've done a few times. Yeah. That looks good. Yeah, you good really, job. You can really even see it. And it's like that's a true white on like an ebony white paint. The kind of the color matches way off. Yeah. But it but it works. So, I mean you can't so, I mean physically like you can't see it unless you get down at that yeah. right level, catch it in the perfect light or something. Mm -hmm. And think how much better it'd be if you actually had the matching color. Yeah, you would be, be able to see it at all. Perfect. Well, let's head back over here, Bill. All right. Well, what do you think? Ready for questions Re and answers? Remind me to, to finish that rocker yeah, panel over the, there. I mentioned the colors are intermixable too. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So I can mention one thing about these paints, mm -hmm. if I may. Um, these colors are all based on OEM paint codes. Okay. So we look at a box of paint and say, whether it's a 10 color kit or a 500 color kit, they're based on OEM paint codes and we want to select what we feel would be the, the best usable, most usable colors in a box of paint. If you were to walk out in a parking lot, how much money can I make off 500 cars that are out here? So with that said, these colors are also intermixable. Um, if you have to use this one to tint this one just a little bit to, to shade them, you can do that. Gotcha. That would take, uh, in my opinion, that would take a good eye. Like, I don't know if I could I do does. that. Mix a bit. But practice again makes perfect. If you yeah. have a bad eye, yeah. we also have this color sensor here. Okay, what's this little gizmo? So this is something we had made, it's proprietary, uh, to work with our box of paint. So okay. in short, we scanned every color in our system 
put it in this thing. You walk up to a car and you scan it and it does a Bluetooth connection to your phone. Okay. It tells you what color it thinks in this box Closest, best, best matches. Best match. Yeah. Okay. It also tells you... Wow. Live broadcast. <laughs> oh. that, that was a box of spray heads uh, being spilt <laughs> onto the floor is what that was. So it'll tell you the second most, the second closest color, the third closest color, and so on. Oh, okay. So again, it's not perfect, but for people who just want to walk up, they say, I don't want to look in this box and have to figure out, is this red closer, is this red? Yeah. All right, do that. Look at your phone, it's going to say, try this one first. Gotcha. So just a, a fun little thing. That so technology making our lives easier. Yeah, it does. Okay. So did you want to try something on the black board? Yeah, we can do that too. Okay. I, I actually have a, a black. I have a black with me. Okay, I'm Victor, gonna we're going to head over this way. The one thing you was talking about doing was pretty cool. All that peppering. Mm -hmm. Down here, so mm -hmm. technique, like, uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. What do we have here? I'm going to put a glove on now that I've already gotten my hand covered in white paint. Gotcha. Okay, so now I, I see quite a bit of rock chips up here. And then there's quite a bit of damage down here on this lower lip. Oh, there actually is. I didn't even see that before. You know, we, and here's one thing to, to note also is that when we look at these cars, we came in earlier, these detailing, detailing lights were on super bright, mm -hmm. which is great for when you're doing paint correction, paint correction and buffing. Yeah. But when you're looking at a black car and you want to know what you have to paint, what, what's really a white chip, mm -hmm. tone the lights down. Gotcha. Good put, tip. Put it your car in the shade because you're going to drive yourself crazy looking with these lights. Every little mark in the clear coat, you're going to think it's a chip and you're going to paint half the hood. Gotcha. And then realize that that wasn't even a chip Good in the first tip. Place. Darken the lights, turn them down, or move the car to a, a less lit up area. Right. Under, okay. under a shade tree. Your white cars, you want to have good light on them so you can see the black specs. Gotcha. Okay, so again, you know, a lot of chips. Um, <laughs> ran out of paint. And paint. we've already done the paint correction to this car. This is one of the cars in our five-day class here. Uh, so I'm going to do half the hood here. I mean, half this region, and we'll leave that just for side by side. Even with these, these the lights way over here, I still have a hard time telling whether that's a real chip or not. But I'll paint it anyway. Someone here have a good count? Did we do six cars or seven cars? Six, six. six cars mm -hmm. in two days. No chairs, okay. no sitting, all hands on, right guys? Sanding. Sanding, everything. everything. Three types of sanding. Yeah. Wet sanding by hand, wet sanding by machine, dry sanding by hand, dry sanding by machine. And um, while he's doing this, we knocked out a 1967 AC Cobra, 1981 square body Chevy, and an, I forget the year, but a 944 Porsche. Sanded and buffed. In this I think we looked it up, it was a 87. 87, Porsche 944. And they're outside. We're going to be going out there and taking a picture of them. They came out flawless. Yeah, that blue one looks really good, that 944. So from what I can tell, again, I'm getting um, glare from this detail light over here. But sure. I, I believe I just covered up to the center point, which I did not do that big chip. Yeah. But I'll do it. So then that's the halfway point. Get a drop of paint to come out there. There's my drop of paint. Do that one, and that one. Yeah, this car actually has quite a few rock chips on yeah. it. The owner's going to be yeah, happy to get it, it back. Does. Having a pro like you I fix think it for so. Yeah, that's right. I mean, <laughs> I'm the master of the paint chip. It's hard to stop. Really, I want to do half of it. And you keep you want to keep going, just a little more, just a little more. Right. Well, it's nice to have a line where you can yeah. you can see it definitive before and after. Mm -hmm. And again, this is what I'll do for dealerships. If you're going to show a dealership. What you can do, find a car that's peppered with chips. Not like three, because they're going to go, well, I still don't see that one there. Yeah. Do a car that's just hammered with chips. And then do half. Do the, do the lesser. Do half of it. 
and then walk out and they're either going to say it looks awesome or they're going to find some reason they don't want to do business with in the first yeah. place. Uh, but there's nothing they can say negative. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to beat. Okay, so that's drying. I don't like watching paint dry. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You want to do something else in the meantime? Uh, you know, do we have any? We got some questions. Okay, yeah, let's, let's do that and then we'll come back and wipe this off. And let's remember to tell them the website to go to for more information or to purchase their own kit or um, yeah. the commercial system you have. TouchUpRx.com. TouchUpRx.com. In fact, this is cool. They got it right there on their gloves. We still have that paint on that rocker panel from okay. those chips. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yep. Uh, just as depending where you want to go. Okay. Again, squeegee that's covered in paint, basically a little pink stuff, and then just clean it off. Just come right off, yep. You got a lid for this somewhere? I tend to lose those things in the middle of, of, of all this action here, but yeah, I do have it. <laughs> okay, Ross. Thanks, Russell. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Barry DeHart here uh, saying Bill's a great guy. He's a Barry. paint chip and scratch repair system. Uh, um, see. One of our good customers. Yeah, that's, that's it as far as questions. I have it's one. It's that simple. Oh, okay. When do we, when can we coat over the paint? So if we want to polish the car, address mm -hmm. the paint chips, if I want to put protection on top, do it tomorrow. Sweet. You're good to go. We've had no adverse effects by doing the ceramic coating over the time. Gotcha. Tank. Okay, well, i uh, tell you what. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for this week's live broadcast. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up. we still got some paint. We'll let some of the students here uh, Chris practice. Chris service. We're going to leave his car there. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going <laughs> to fix it, Chris. And then we'll also All address right. and take care of the uh, black fishing. Porsche. Uh, we don't have a topic for next week, but I will be back in Florida for a live broadcast next Wednesday at our normal time, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there. And Thanks, also Mike. we got a class coming up uh, first weekend of May, and we have a one-day class coming up on June 8th in our Stewart, Florida training center. Mm -hmm. More information, go to drbeasleys.com. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks.